We're allowed to say that, you know, if you do have time to learn before Pesach, we learn Hilchis Pesach, before Sukkis, we learn Hilchis Sukkis Dalit Minim. But who has time before Yom Tiv to learn Hilchis Yom Tiv? Yet, as we'll see today, Hilchis Yom Tiv is an extremely important subject. There are many, many shells that come up on a typical Yom Tiv. This year we have a Yom Tiv Shechal B'Shabbos that's even more challenging. And I'll just share with you a few questions just to begin with. Pesach, as we know, there's a lot of peeling, peeling vegetables, peeling potatoes. Are you allowed to use a potato peeler, vegetable peeler on Yom Tiv? I know Shabbos we don't use a peeler. Is there any difference as far as Yom Tiv? Shavuos, we had a Shaila, someone wanted to peel an apple, cut off the, the shells, the, the pits. Shavuos night, and he'll eat it first in the middle of the night, in the middle of learning. In other words, he's doing boira for much later, not for immediate use, which on Shabbos is also. Are you allowed to do that on Yom Tiv? Sukkot, we have the shayla of a fly in the soup in the sukkah. We had a very interesting shayla. Someone told me Rosh Hashanah, he brings the head of the fish to the table as the minig is, and his wife gave an ultimatum. It's either me or the head of the fish. <laughs> She's not coming at a table with the head of the fish. So he wanted to take off the fish part way before the suda, be boira the fish and just leave the, the head of it on the side. In other words, making boira on Rosh Hashanah for later use, not for immediate use. So if you notice, just in a moment, we mentioned four shilas touching upon the four Yamim Tov, Rosh Hashanah, Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuos. And as we'll see, there's really more. But really, the question boils down to a very simple shaila. Yom Tiv, as we should know, is not a hefkevelt. Reb Chaim Briska once said, Yom Tiv is really like Shabbos. But there are many heterim. You'll add up to Eichel Nefesh. But it's not a hefkevelt. You know, we once had this shaila. True story. One of my neighbors had a, a fig tree. And every year he grew figs, this time, uh, the, the Rosh Hashanah time. It was a very convenient Shechianu because it was always a fresh crop. You knew where it was coming from. So for years we used his figs as a Shechianu. One year he forgot to cut it off the tree before Rosh Hashanah. So he asked the Shaila on Rosh Hashanah, could he pull it off the tree? And for Eichel Nefesh, he's going to eat it on Rosh Hashanah. Is Kaitza Mutta on Yom Tiv? <clears throat> so it comes to mind a Yerushalmi, Taisus and Be'ya Dav Gimel quotes it, that says that the Pasik says, Asha Hiyachel Lechol Nefesh, and it says next to that, Ushmartem Es Hamatzois. Zakti Rishalmi, not all Malachis on Yom Tiv are muta. It's only the Malachis from Lisha and onward, from needing onward. The Hezbe is, Chazal didn't warn Mate every Malach on Yom Tiv. And this is quoted, all this is quoted in Shulchan Aruch in the beginning of Ilchas Yom Tiv Tav Tzadik Hei, Sif Aleph. First, the Mechab and a very interesting Lashin, whatever is Asa on Shabbos is Asa on Yom Tiv. Chutz, from Eichel Nefesh, Chaitzah, Havar. But the starting point is Yom Tiv is not a Hefkevel. Yom Tiv is like Shabbos, but they're a Teir. Then in Sif Beis, he says, Ktsira, Tchina, Betsira, Schita and Seda, those five malachis, even if it's Eichel Nefesh, is Asa. And the Mishtabura quotes Harbei Paiskim that these malachis are Asa Midaraisa even on Yom Tiv. Ah, it's Eichel Nefesh. Zok the Mishtabura quoting the, ta- the Yushalmi. Since this, these malachis are before Lisha, there's no heta to do it on Yom Tiv. In other words, this is Allah Chalamaisa like the Rishalmi. So in Mimela, our Shaila, someone wanted to pull off a fig on Yom Tiv, even for Archel Nefesh, is Vada Yasa. That's Mamash Awa Machaba. Someone uh, wants to trap a fly that's bothering him on Yom Tiv, Tzeda is Asa, even on Yom Tiv. That's also the Machaba. There is an old minig on Pesach, we make our own orange juice. That's very nice on Chalamaid. But to squeeze oranges or squeeze any fruits on Yom Tiv, that's included in the Mechaba. Schita on Yom Tiv is Asa. Now the big question is, what about Boira? Is Boira a malacha, malacha that's muta on Yom Tiv? Like, like cooking or baking? Is Boira like Tzira or Schita that's Asa? 
So l'chayr, if you use the litmus test of lisha ve'elach, bayr is way before lisha. In fact, what's interesting is the Shulchan Aruch lists five things that are us on Yom Tov: tzira, tchina, betzira, schita, and seida. The Mishtabrura and Sifkat and Yud Aleph adds who had din disha dash v'harkada. Harkada is merakeid sifting. The Mishtabrura makes the point of saying that sifting is awesome. He does not mention Baira as being awesome, and this is very strange because in the order of the Malachis, Baira is before merakeid. So if merakeid is asa, Baira certainly should be asa. So now we're, we're sort of confused. Baira should be Asa because it's before Lisha. But then again, the Mishtabruk makes a list and does not include Baira. Merakit seems to be Asa, Baira seems to be Muta. How do we reconcile? <clears throat> so we're going to make a suggestion, and that is there are really two types of Bairas that we encounter in, in Hilcha Shabbos or Yom Tiv. There is the Baira that was done in the fields. The bayra that was done before Lisha, Lamashal, when you had the wheat, the kernels in the field, then that was that you did bayra then. Or when you bayra on a large scale, Lamashal Merakeid is way before Lisha, you are sifting the flour. That taka is before Lisha, and that's awesome. But the bayer that we encounter on a regular Shabbos or Yom Tiv, using a vegetable peeler, a fly in the soup, uh, peeling an apple, that's way beyond Lisha. In other words, when bayer is done in the fields, Yomim Rabim, on a large scale, that's no different than Merak and it's awesome. But the bayer that we encounter on a regular Shabbos or Yom Tiv in the kitchen, in the dining room, that would be Eichel Nefesh, and that's Mutter. And I must tell you that we find this very similar to Toichen. Toichen, we learned, the Mechabe says, is Asa on Yom Tiv. Yet we all know, you'll let her cut up a salad, you'll let her mash a banana on Yom Tiv. Ay, Toichen is Asa. So, Bemis, the Rishonim, the Ramban and Beya, the Ra'ah, both say that Toichen that was done in the field in the, a large scale, before Lisha's Taka Asa. But Toichen that's done in fruit preparation that's about to be eaten is Mota. So why don't we say the same regarding Boira? Boira in the fields, Yom and Rabim is Asa. Boira in the kitchen or the dining room is Mota. And the embassy is, this seems to be a Beferish in Mishnah. The Mishnah in Beya, the Fyudalar and Medbeis, Haboira Kitni is Beyomtiv, if you want to separate the psoilus from, from kidneys, from beans, base hillel oim and boira kedarka. You'll have to make boira regularly. Bechekai, do boira on your lap. Bechnoin, in a funnel, uva tamchai, with a plate. The lotion of boira kedarka on yom tev seems to indicate that boira is mutter. But the next words, avaloi betavla, don't use a big tray. Voloi benapa, voloi bekvara, those are different type of sieves. You're allowed to make boira, but you can't use a big keli. Now, this is also a little confusing. The question is, if boira kedarkei, which implies boira is muta, why can I use a nafa and a kvara? So Rabbi say for us it's very gishmak. Boira that's done on a small scale, on your lap, kenoyin and tamchoy, that's takamuta. But if you're dealing with a nafa and a kvara, that was done in the field. That's a big, on a larger scale, that's taka asa. And if you look in Rashi, that earlier Rashi, that you base and base, Rashi says, why is nafa and kfara asa? The mechzi commander over the tsayrech machar, she ain't derech lasis bekalem elu elaharbe. So it seems to be the deciding fact is bayra on a small scale in the kitchen is muta. Bayra on a large scale, yom im rabim is asa. However, there's a Rajba in Avodah Sakaydesh. The Rajba is quoted by the Magimish and Hilchas Yom Tov Gimel Tezvav. That basically the Rajba says any Baira that on Shabbos is the Raisa, you can't do on Yom Tov. Only a Baira the Rabbanam, Lamashal, 
taking the psoilus from the oichel, the Raj holds is the Rabbanan, on Shabbos, which is the Chiddush. So that on Yom Tiv is Mutter. But Zok the Raj, a boyer that on Shabbos is the Raisa, you can't do on Yom Tiv. Zok the Raj, where did I get this from? From the Mishnah. Since the Mishnah asks is Napa Kfara on Yom Tiv, why is it us? I boyer is Mutter. Must be boyer the Raisa on Yom Tiv is also. Nap and Kvar is awesome. But Bayrat the Rabban and his mutter. This Rajba is a tremendous Chumr. That you can't do Bayrat the Raisa on Yamtu. However, Zakta Magid Mishnah, Kvoid Harab and Mekoimai Munach, the Rajba is not right. If the Mishnah says Bayrat Kedarkoi, that seems to say Bayrat on Yamtu is mutter. Zakta Magid Mishnah, Bayrat on Yamtu, Kaoifa Umavashal Dami. Boira on Yom Tiv is just as much as cooking and baking. Aye, and this for us is music to our ears. Why Nafa and Kfar and the Mishnah is also? Zogdim Agim Mishnah Rashi explained. Because Nafa and Kfar is used for Yomim Rabim. So we see a Machleikis Rishonim. When is Boira Mutta? And it's all based on our Mishnah. The Rajbel Boira the Rais is also like Nafa and Kfar. The Magad Mishnah held Boyer the Rice is Mutter. Boyer is like Oif Mavashel. The one problem on Yom Tiv is don't do Boyer Le Yomim Rabim on a large scale. Now, this I want to mention the Bialacha writes in a few words in Tafku, if you would see Beis, the Rajbis sheet was that Boyer on Shabbos taking bad from good is only Midrabon. We don't pass in that way. But basically, this is. The way of learning is Bayra on Yom Tiv Mutter or not. And the Shulchan Aruch, but more specifically the Chayodam in Pei Beis, Beis, Paskins, like the Magad Mishnah. The Rajba, the Grace of Rajba is the Rajba, but we Paskin like the Magad Mishnah. So in other words, Bayra on Yom Tiv is like Oifa and Mavashal, is Mutter. The one exception is Bayra that's done on a larger scale, Yom Imrab. Now, before we get to the actual halach lamais, I want to learn one shtick of the Gemara, which is very important. The Gemara is in Beya later, the Avchav Tessa Medbeis, where the Gemara says you're not allowed to, as we saw, you're not allowed to sift flour. That's the is of Merakeid. Nafal tsrar or kiseim, if a pebble or a splinter, a piece of wood, fell into the flour, zok the Gemara, you can't take it out, biyadayim, if there's an impurity, if there's a debris in the flour, you can't take it out by hand. Now this is a pella, because this has alamilus. You're not even using a keli. Forget about nafak, you're not even using a keli. And you're not doing a liyam memrabim l'chayra. You're taking out a dirt, piece of dirt. It's not in the field. Why is it also? So the emphasis, the rif, the rambam, and the rosh, do not quote this Gemara. We don't pass it like this Gemara. It's Mutter. The Beis Yosef, the Dark Gemara, and Tov Kuvav both say, La Locha, we don't pass it like this Gemara. If you have a debris in the flower, you'll have to take it out. But the Beis Yosef in his second shot, and the Ramah and Tov Kuvav, Siv Beis, is Chayshish for this Gemara. That if you have a stone or a piece of wood in the flower, you can take it out with your hand. And the question is, why is this worse? If Bayri essentially is mutter, why is a stone, a piece of wood, in flour any worse? But the question is much more negeya. Because the Maril, the Avi Minig Ashkenaz, and Hilchaz Yom Tev Oizches, was talking about matzah meal. They took matzah, they ground it. And I guess they wanted to use it in a, in a food product. The problem was there were some clumps, big piece of matzah, that were not properly ground. So you have matzah meal, which is basically like flour, but there are big pieces of matzah. So the Maril says, if you really want, you could grind that matzah even on Shabbos or Yom Tiv. Ay, toichen, on Shabbos and Yom Tiv is also, ain toichen, ach toichen. But then the Maril says, ach yizoyer shal ayivra piru magdoilem mitoich haketanim, ki isa boyer yeish nami ba'oichlin. But don't take out the big pieces of matzah, because that would be Boira on Yom Tiv. Then, of course, I would add the Magan Avram explains that even though it's all matzah, 
but this is matzah male and this is matzah, so it's like two minim. But the Maril is saying something that's puzzling. You can't take out a big piece of matzah from matzah male because of boira. Shkoyach. But boira and yom is muta. What's the problem? I will say maybe that's going with the Rajba that holds boira and yom is us, so we don't pass him like that, which the Taz says, but it can't be because the Magen Avram in Tafkov Dalid Sif Kotan Tes that does not pass him like the Rajba. Quotes this, Maril, you can't take out a big piece of matzah from matzah meal. And this is a pellet. So the Yamsha Shloima in Beya Aleph Membeis, Tama Ani Yem Yotsu Advaram Mepiv, I don't think the Maril said such a thing, it can't be. But Lamais the Maril said it. Zoktimogan Avram Alichtig Yisoid. Taking out matzah from matzah meal is not. Any better than taking out a stone from flour. So if a stone from flour is asa, matzah male, matzah from matzah male is asa. So now we have two problems. Why is the pebble from, from the flour asa? And why is matzah male asa? Zog de machzis a shekel in tough kuvdal tzif cotton test, a beautiful yesoid. Whenever you have flour, it's almost always before Lisha. The Yesoid of the Gemara is when you're dealing with flour, Baira is always Asa. Because flour is before Lisha. I, why is the Matzah for Matzah male Asa? That was already made into Matzah. So the Matzah Shekha says a Chiddush. That since you could take Matzah and regrind it and make it into almost like flour, we treat Matzah like flour. But the Chiddush of the machza shekel is whenever you have flour, it's before Lisha. And therefore it's awesome. Oh, it's beautiful. When you have dirt in beans, like the Mishnah, Bayrakadarkai. When you have flour, flour is always awesome. The Avnei Nez and the Chuva Shin Pei Zayin, Sif Kotan Zayin, says a Gevaldige Einfall. He says, Where do we know Lisha Ve'elach? Is mut before lish is asa because the pasuk is shmarta mesa matzos. So I mean, this is typical Avnei Nez is Einfall. He says late shita that shmura has to be mishas lisha. It's beautiful because we're talking about ushmarta mesa matzos. Why after lisha? Zokti eglit zokti Avnei Nez. You can't say shmarta mesa matzos if you talk about flour. Flour is not matzah. So therefore, just like the din of Shmira, Shmura, when it's a matzah, the same is true regarding regarding the Issa Boira. Flour is not matzah, and flour is also. Zog de Egle when it comes to, to beans, or any other food for that matter, it's always food. There's not shaykh before tchina, after tchina, it's always food. So the chilek is, flour is always also, Beans or other food is mutter. That's the Chiddush of the Machzah Shek. The Rav Shulchan Aruch, in Tov Kuvav, Siv Dalet, and Be'ik in the Kuntus Achrein, Siv Kot Nalav there, says also a simple Yisoid. Flour was always done the Yom Mim Rabim. You see the Malachim Merakid. So it's not so much a din of flour being Kaidim Lisha, but flour is always done the Yom and Rabbim. And that's the big no-no. Therefore, flour is asa, beans is muta. Now, one thing that Bialacha, when he quotes this Rav, he asks, what about the Maril? What about matzah and matzah meal? So he buys the Tzorachin. But Lechaira, the Rav could use the matzah shekels, you say. Matzah may, could be turned to matzah meal. So why don't we treat matzah and matzah meal like flour? So we have two Pasha to this either flour is before Lisha or flour ma- is a Yomim Rabbim. The last chat is the Chayodim in Pei Bey's Gimel. Chayodim seems to say, when is Boira and Yom Tiv Mutter if you do a Shinoi? Zok the Chayodim, that's why when a debris falls in to a bit of a, a, a flour, the derech is to take it out with your hands. That's why it's us. Now this Chayodam is a tremendous Chumrah. That Boira on Yom Tiv is only Mutter when it's the de- when it's not the Derech. 
Lemaisa, this is a big chiddush, and I must tell you the the chayinim ask on this chayyadam because in tough kuf you would see dalit based on a gemara. We find you're allowed to sift the shmarim, the impurities in the wine. Aye, that's the derech. So the chayyadam was the chayyadam. Trust me. Some say only if there's a different alternative. But let's chazer over. I want to get right to Allah lemaisa. It seems that we have to realize Yom Tiv is basically like Shabbos. Many malachas are also. Oichel Nefesh is mutta on Yom Tiv. Is boira mutta on Yom Tiv? The answer is a boira that's done in the kitchen. Food preparation is basically mutta. Boira that's done Yom Mim Rabim. Boira that's done with flour is a problem because it's Yom Mim Rabim. Even though we saw the Chayodam that's a little more machmir, and Boyer is only mutu with the Shinoi, we must realize that really according to many Rishonim, the Rambam, the Rif, and the Rosh, they're not even Goyeris, the problem of the Gemara of Tzrar. They hold that Tzrar that fell into flour is mutu, like I told you. It's one Pshad and Beis Yosef, it's one Ramah that says, Nochoin Linoig, like that shita. So we're talking about a nochain linoig. We could say we could be mekel, like the, the pshat of the machsa shekel, or the rav. Flour is the major problem. But any other food, boira, would be muta as long as it's not yomim rabim. Now I hope the rest should be simple. Let's apply lemaisa. On Shabbos, as we know, we do not make tea from a tea bag. And there are two problems with making tea on Shabbos. The obvious problem is you're cooking the tea bag. That's bishul. There's another problem that's often encountered by making tea, and that is boira. Because if you put a tea bag into the water and you take out the tea bag because you don't want it there, that's boira. You're taking psyllis from oichel. That's why on Shabbos we don't make tea. On Yom Tiv, it's possible you'll have to make a tea because bishul on Yom Tiv is mutter. And boira on Yom Tiv in this context is mutav. This is not flour, this is not Yom and Rabim. In, in fact, we could add that even if you have a chinik, the old-fashioned chinik that you put a few tea bags in, you put some hot water in it, and then you pour the tea scents out, and there's like a strainer inside the chinik that holds the tea bags back. In other words, there's a strainer in the pourer, so you're only getting pure tea scents, and it restrains, it holds back the tea bags. That chinik is also known as a kliboyer. So to use that on Shabbos is an additional problem of boyer. The question is, can I use this chinik, this kliboyer on Yom Tiv? The answer is absolutely. As long as it's not a kliboyer liyom and rab, it's not a sifta, it's not a sieve, it's not a napo kvara, Boira on Yom Tiv in this context is perfectly mutter. The Shmir Shabbos in Dalat Tezvav says this. More of a challenging issue is using a peeler, a vegetable peeler, a potato peeler. So let me just give you a little background. On Yom on Shabbos, you're allowed to peel cucumbers even if you won't eat the peels. Ah, you're taking the bad from the good. You're taking the shell from the Good, you're allowed to peel nuts, crack nuts. Are ah, you taking the bad from the good? The teretz is that that's the famous chiddush of klifa, that derech, if that's the derech achila to take off the bad from the good, it's mutter. So you're allowed to crack nuts, you're allowed to peel vegetables, but to use a vegetable peel, a potato peel, is a problem. Why? Because that's a klibayra. A klibayra is never permissible on Shabbos. Using a knife to peel the cucumbers is mutter because a knife is a kliyoichel. It's one of the utensils to eat. But, a, but this peeler is, is designed to peel, i.e. make boira. So we consider a peeler as a kli boira. And many pais give a chayish, that's a boira deraisa. It's a kli boira, no different than a nap and a kvar. The question is, on Yom Tiv, can you use a peeler? Zok, Rabbi Shleim, Zalman, and Shmir Hashab, is Dalet Chavtes, no problem. Even though it's a Kli Meyuchet Leboira, on Shabbos it's a Deraisa, but on Yom Tiv, Boira is Mutter. Ah, you're using a Keli, but it's not done Le Yom Rab, you peel one vegetable at a time. 
So what on Shabbos could be a malacha deraisa, on Yom Tov is perfectly mutter. That's what the Shlomo Zalman says, and Divir Pechachim Chayin, he's right. <laughs> it's a Kli Boira, but that's never conceivably Yom Im Rabbim. Rabbi Yashiv and Mavakshi Tari Yom Tov Reish Nun Zayin, the Debatsin Arav Ches Reish Gimel, the Chutzani Yom Tov Kuf Chavav, the Arlatsin Gimel Yotes Zayin, all say a pillar on Yom Tov is Mutter. Now you have to wonder, according to the Chayodam, that holds that you have to make a Shinoi, it could, could come out that a pillar on Yom Tov would be Asa. Rabbi Yankov in Emes Liyakov and our Simon Tafkuf Yud says a pillar is an Ovda Dechayel. So I've heard people that are being Machmir, but Paik Chazi developed his Mekel to use a pillar on Yom Tov. As we said, the Gedali Apoiskim seemed to say it's a simple Halacha that a Kli Boyer that's not Yom Im Rabbim on Yom Tov is Muta. This year, Grada, we have two days of Yom Tiv that are also Shabbos, so a pillar should not be used. But on a regular Yom Tiv, the minig is to use a pillar. People have a slotted, uh, serrated spoon, and let's say you want to take only the coastal, you do not want the, the juice. So if you don't want, Tafka don't want the juice, that would be Boyer. I am taking the coleslaw and I'm leaving the psilus behind. But the slotted spoon is a klibayra. Klibayra on Shabbos is also, even if you're taking the goods from the bed. So on Shabbos, you should not use a slotted, uh, serrated spoon. But on Yom Tiv, this is mutter. This spoon is no way near a Yom Im Rabim, Kaili. It's a klibayra, true, but it's not Yom Im Rabim, and it would be mutter. An apple korah is also a klibayra. It takes out the core, it takes out the psilis. On Shabbos, we don't use an apple core. Yom Tiv, Boira, is Muta. Again, it's nothing near a Nap and a Kvara, and therefore it's Muta. An interesting question is a nutcracker. Now this year we have two days Yom Tiv that are also Shabbos, and Pesach especially, we use a nutcracker a lot. L'chayra, a nutcracker, is a Kli Boira. So therefore, on Yom Tiv, there's no question, is Muta. But what about on Shabbos? Zog the Egle Tal in Boira, Sivov, it can't be a Boira, it can't be that a nutcracker is a Kli Boira. It's a Chayr, but Ferish a Mishnah, nutcracker is Mutta. Now, this you have to be an Egle Tal and Avinezer to say this. Where do you see a Mishnah that a nutcracker is Mutta? Zog the Egle Tal, in the beginning of the 16th period, Kala Kalim and Shabbos, you'll have to use a hammer to crack a nut. Okay, it's not a nutcracker, Mamish, but close enough. Freg the Egle Tal, why is it Mutter? Ah, it's Mamash making a Maisa Boira. And a nut crack is Meyuchit to crack nuts. Zog the Egle Tal, a very simple Yisoid. The nut cracker cracks the nut and makes a Taru voice. You have to come along and take out the good from the bad. A nut cracker is a Kli Taru voice, not a Kli Boira. You have to come along and make the Taru voice. So therefore we could say a nutcracker as opposed to an apple core, a slotted spoon, or a peeler is even mutta on Shabbos. It's a kli taruvais, not a kli boyer. Someone made a nice roast and he wants to trim the fats before he serves it. So on Shabbos you have to be careful that might be boyer, unless he does it in halacha, but on Yom Tev you could trim the fats any way you want because Yom Tev boyer is mutta. If you want to pour off that liquid that sometimes gathers on top of a, a yogurt, so on Shabbos you're pouring off the psoilus from the oichel, that might be a problem, unless that's derech achile bakach, but on Yom Tev it's certainly mutter. I'll give you an interesting example. This used to be a very common shayla. They used to make their own cheese or butter. So without getting into the details, because it's really not negeya, making cheese or butter involves boira. So the Shulchan in Tav Kuf Yud, Sif Hey writes, you're not allowed to make Gvina on Yom Tiv, and there are more ads, you can't make butter on Yom Tiv. The question is, I thought butter on Yom Tiv is mutter, why can't you make cheese or butter? So Zog the Mishtabura, since you could make the butter or cheese before Yom Tiv, we'll soon see the Derech, the Derech Klal, whatever Malacha can be done before Yom Tiv, you have to make it before Yom Tiv. Now, generally, you don't, you're not mechiv to cook and bake before Yom Tiv because fresh food is more tasty if it's made right away. But says the Mishnah 
cheese or butter, the longer it stays, the better it is. So this is a rare case of a malacha that's better before Yom Tif, therefore you can't make it on Yom Tif. Then, says the Mishnah, we're quoting the Gary Achreinim, but let's say it was Efsha from Yom, from Erev Yom Tif, it's still us. Why? Because Haderach Lasoy Say Liyomim Rab Mavavi Ov the Dechayel. And again, for us, that's music to our ears. Because the one problem on Baira on Yom Tiv is if it's done on a large scale, Yom Im Rabim. Cheese, butter is always made the Yom Im Rabim. So here we see the Suga is basically one cloud. Baira is Mutta unless it's done the Yom Im Rabim. Cheese is an example of Yom Im Rabim. Sometimes you have a tray of cake, of course not on Pesach, but I'm talking about Sukkis and Shvuas or Shoshana. You have a tray of cake and it's all mi- mixed up, different slices of cake. You want to put it away for later, for after Yom Tiv. So to put it in the freezer is not a problem. To start sorting and taking out the seven layer cake and the sponge cake and this cake and, and sorting the cakes is a problem even on Yom Tiv. Because this is not Oichel Nefesh. You're not eating it today. It's being done for after Yom Tiv. Now, if the tray is laid out and each type of cake is separate, it's not a taru vais, no. If it's not a taru vais, there's no boira. But assuming that it's a taru vais situation, so then on, even on Yom Tiv would be also because it's not Oichel Nefesh. You're not eating it for that day. The same would be true if you have a case of cold cuts that are all mixed up, a taru vais situation, just like on Shabbos it's also, Yom Tov would be also, because it's not for Eichel Nefesh. How about the question we began with? You want to make Boira on Yom Tov, let's say Shavuos night, at 11 o'clock, you're going to slice an apple, take out the pits, to eat uh, when you get tired at 2 in the morning. Or you want to take the fish off the head of the fish, you're doing it uh, before Mayrev to use it after Mayrev. So, taking the good from the bad is muta, only if you're using it, la'isa suda. Our question is, taking the good from the bad, if it's not la'isa suda, you're doing 11 o'clock for 2 o'clock in the morning. On Shabbos, that would be a malachad ar'isa. Boira, that's not miyad, is a malachad ar'isa. However, this is our sugya. Light the rajba, it's not a problem. If you if you hold it to the raisa, but ledidan as we said ledidan boira on yom tiv is muta zok the ramo and tough kuf yud siv beis ha boira kitni is biyom tiv boira kedarka is zok the ramo im roitzi lechol boy biyom as long as you're going to use it in the halachic day, in other words you peel you you're doing it shvuas night for shvuas morning that's one day. As long as you're doing it for that day, it's mut. Now, the Magen Avram, Mr. Burr quotes it, adds, you can't do it, a Lamashal, on Yom Tev Rishon to use it on Yom Tev Sheni. Why not? I burn Yom Tev is mutter. The problem is not Boyer, the problem is Achana. We don't make Achana from day to day. But if it's the same halachic day, night, day, or morning for the afternoon, or Lamashal, the women want to go to shul on Yom Tiv. They want to make the exile, do all the boyer, the peeling vegetables, before they go to shul. They're going to peel the vegetables at 8 o'clock in the morning. They're going to have the suda at 12 o'clock. On Shabbat, that's Malach of the On Yom Tiv, that's perfectly mutta. As long as it's in the Oisai Yom, boyer on Yom Tiv is mutta. Now, this question is a little tricky this year because this year we have a... Yom Tiv Friday going into Shabbos. So you're going to make a challenge and peel the potatoes on Friday for Shabbos. Ah, it's not La'oisa Yom. Teretz is, you're right. But we're making Erev Tavshilin. So since you're allowed to cook and bake Friday to Shabbos, you're allowed to make Boira. In other words, the problem is not Boira per se. The problem is on preparing on Friday for Shabbos is Hachana. Ah, for Hachana... The Erev Tavshilin is the remedy. So Taka Boyer, we don't make one day to the next. The notable exception, like this year, that we're making Erev Tavshilin, you'll add a peel with a peeler on Friday for Shabbos. The Bialacha says in Tav Kuf Yud, Siv Beis, that an Erev Tavshilin is Mata Boyer from Friday to Shabbos. 
It might be true, according to the Rajba, that Taka or Erev Tashil will not help for Bayra. Because since Bayra is not, since the Bayra is not Mutan at the scene, who said the Erev Tashil and his Mata and Issa the Raisa? But the Didan, again, we pass and like the Rajba, so you'll add appeal for any time of the day, Alachic day, but on this year, Friday to Shabbos, is Mutan even on the next day, because Bayra is Mutan with an Erev Tashilin. Important question. Someone had a mixture of psoilus and eichel. He could have separated it on, on Erev Yom Tiv, but he said, you know what? Bayer is the Mutan Yom Tiv, I'll wait till Yom Tiv. Is that true? Can you delay making Bayer on Erev Yom Tiv because you rely on doing it on Yom Tiv? So this is not Pashat at all. The Ramah in the beginning of Hilchas Yom Tiv, Tav Tzadik Hei Aleph, Says there are many sheetas that hold even oichel nefesh that is muta on yomtiv, but if it's efsha to do from erev yomtiv, you're not allowed to delay it and do it on yomtiv. In other words, try to avoid it. The Mishnah says a beautiful hezba: don't waste yomtiv time doing malachis. You shouldn't waste yomtiv. Do it erev yomtiv. Why should you waste precious time on yomtiv doing malachis? Whatever the case is, the Ramah is paskening that Malacha of Eichel Nefesh, that's Mutta, is only Mutta if it was unable to be done before Yom Tif. The Mishtabura makes a big point and says basically, cooking and baking, you're not required to do it from Erev Yom Tif. Because food that is made fresh has a better quality, better taste. Food but Klal loses its taste, or part of it, if it's done in advance. That's why you're allowed to cook and bake on Yom Tiv itself. But one exception that is no difference when you do it is Bayra. You have, let's say, a lot of nuts and you have shells. It does not affect the quality if you take out the shells Erev Yom Tiv or Yom Tiv. So, Zakti Bi Alacha, that's why when it comes to Bayra, whenever possible, make sure to make the Bayra Erev Yom Tiv because that's Efsha mi Ba'oyjoim, that will not be Mefik Tam at all. And the Rav, the Archashochan and see if you had all quote this, La Lacha, that if you have a Bayra situation, make sure to do it Erev Yom Tiv. If you forgot to do it, or you were delayed, you're allowed to do it on Yom Tiv, but you have to make a Shinui. Now, let me just apply this more specifically. Someone that on Shabbos is always worried about feeding the children fish, I'm talking about a, a slice of fish because there are bones. So on Shabbos there's, a, there's an issue with Bayra. But on Yom Tiv you could take out all the bones and serve it to the child. No Shaila. Why? Even though it's real Bayra, taking the bad from the good, but Bayra on Yom Tiv is Mut. Now, are we going to say that from now on you have to take out the bones from the fish Erev Yom Tiv and serve just pieces of fish? The answer is no. Because it's not appetizing to serve just fish. You serve a slice of fish and you say, eat carefully, I'll help you, I'll take out the bones. But that's considered EF Shemi Boyajayim to take out, take a nice piece of salmon and butcher it up and take out the fish. You know, something that can't be done if it's not appetizing or pleasant, that's EF Shem. Watermelon, watermelon pits, Zechreinim uh, Levracha, I have to say, you know, it's hard to find them. But on Shabbos, taking out the pits, according to many sheet, this is Boyer. But on Yom Tiv, you'll have to take out the pits, even though it's Sayla Samaichel. Because Bayra on Yom Tiv is Mut. Now, you're not Mechayif to cut up all the watermelon there of Yom Tiv and take out all the pits. That would be considered an Efsha Mi Ba'oid Yom. We had this question, someone made Lakshin, of course not on Pesach, he made Lakshin on Shavuos or Sukkis or Rosh Hashanah. He cooked Lakshin. He wants to make a Kugel or whatever it is. So now we have a pot of Lakshin in water. Can he use a strainer and take out the water from the Lakshin? So on Yom Tiv, this L'chair is the problem. He's using a strainer. But the answer is, that particular strainer for Lakshin is no way Yom Im Rabbim. That's one little bit. So this I saw, Taka, the Cheshav Eifoyd, and Gimel Lamed Hei, the Shmir Shabbos, Dal Lidvav, Rabbi Yashiv, and Mavak Sheitayr, Amad Reish, Nun Zayin, that all say that it's not a din in strainer, it's a din in Yom Im Rabbim. So a small household strainer that sifts the luxion from the water is not a Yom Im Rabim at all. You're allowed to use that strainer on Yom Tif. Now someone asked, 
But what about the fact that you could cook lakshin mi boijoy? It doesn't get spoiled. But I'm not a very big maven, but I asked a few people. They say you could tell the difference if it was made erev yamtiv or made on yamtiv. So as long as there's a difference in quality, you're allowed to cook. And once you cook it, you're allowed to strain the lakshin from the water. Now, someone asked a very interesting question. Until you learn the sugi, it wouldn't bother you. But we said, regarding boira, the big no-no is wheat, flour. That's why you can't take out the debris from flour. And the machza shekel, and presumably the rav said, even taking matzah from matzah meal is a problem, because you, you could change it into flour. So how could you strain lakshin? Lakshin, of course, is predominantly flour. Why don't we treat it like matzah from matzah meal? The answer is very posh. Matzah, you could re- change it into, fla- into matzah meal, which is similar to flour. But once lakshin is made, you can't revert it back to flour. So lakshin is made from wheat, but it doesn't have that property of flour. So I think that's why it's not a problem. A sukkah's question, but it could happen even a uh, hot Pesach also, a shvua, certainly, you have a fly, an insect in your soup, in your tea. What is the procedure on Yom Tiv? So regarding Shabbos, we all remember the famous Taz, the Mishdevura, and see in Shin Yotes quotes it, that to take out just the fly is Baira, take out the fly with a little bit soup. Mishdevura quotes that in Hilchah Shabbos. Now the question is, what about Yom Tiv? Zop the Taz Bayos and Elchaz Yom Tev Tav Kovov Sif Cotton Gimel Mr. Bruce Sif Cotton Yud Base quotes this same thing. You have a fly in your soup in the sukkah or whenever it is on Yom Tev, take out the fly with a little bit soup. L'chayra, it's pashit. Just like you have to take out, you can't take out a stone from flour. You can't take out a fly from soup. But wait a second, that doesn't seem to be true. From flour, that is Kaidam Lisha, that is Yamim Rabim, that's awesome. But we said you'll have to make Baira from on beans. So why is a soup a problem? A soup is not flour. And I must tell you the Shmira Shabbos in Dalit Chav Gimel quoting of Shlaim Zalman, who was very surprised. And he says, What's the problem of taking out just the fly? There's no Yamim Rabim, it's not a Kli Baira, it's not a Manap and Kvara. And it's, it's interesting, Loit the Rav, and Loit the Machsa Shekel, and even the Chaya Yodam, it should be mutter to take out with a spoon just to fly. Usually you use a sifter. And Reza Zapella, the Rav and the Chaya Yodam have extensive coverage of Hilchas Yom Tiv. They do not quote this Taz of taking out the fly with soup. And I can make a shtickle of Shittas here because the Taz goes with the Rajba. Maybe that's why it's us. But it's very possible that taking out just the fly on Yom Tev is mutter. Now, the Chut Hashani says you have to do with the Shinoi, like the Chayodam, and therefore the Shinoi is taking out with soup. Okay. Maybe Stam, we try to do things uh, more Mahuda, we do it in an oifen that it's not Baira. But I think we have to realize that taking a fly from the soup should be mutter just the fly, but the Mr. Bura says take out with a little bit soup, maybe he wanted to do it in a way that it's mutter even on Shabbos. Agav, someone asked, you're talking about taking out the fly, boy, what about the kashris? There was a fly in a hot soup? Now, even though it's a tiny, minuscule fly, but we know that a birya, a complete item, is not bottle. So how could you use the soup? Even if there's no boy, what about the t- kasha of the soup? But this, you probably remember, this is a psak of Haman. <laughs> Haman said that if, a, if the Adonia Melech touches the wine, it's asa. But if the fly falls into the soup, it's mutta. So obviously it's mutta. Why is it mutta? So this is the Yisoyed in Kuf Zayin. Basically, the taka of fly is asa even if it's tiny. Because it's a birya. But the tam of the fly is not a birya. If you have a fly missing one leg, one of its many legs, it's, it's mutta. It's, once it's bottle, it's mutta. It's, it's only a complete bug. The tam of a birya is only part of the birya. And therefore, it's bottle b'shishim and it's mutter. So Haman was right. Rather, regarding the Adonai Melech touching the wine, he was wrong. Because only if he pours the wine, so he was a halbal hamdan. Next question, which is a very big question in recent years, and that is, 
using filtered water, using the filter on Yom Tif. So let me refresh your memory. Incidentally, this is historical, historically that the filthy problem with the bugs in water began on Pesach. I heard this from Ravelsky. Someone came to me and said, look, I bought the, the romaine lettuce that's pre-checked, no bugs, I see a bug here. So Ravelsky told me, I told him, <laughs> in other words, it's not from the romaine lettuce, it's from the water that you washed, which was true. So then we started the tumult about the using a filter because there are copepods. parts. Now for those that use a filter on Shabbos, so Yom Tov is no different. I'm talking about for those that are, are makbit on Shabbos that they consider they would not drink the water without a filter. So the chayra, the filter on Shabbos is also. Why is it also? I'm taking the good from the bad. I'm taking the water. I'm leaving the bugs behind. But the filter is a klebayer. So if you put on a sink just to wash your hands, a tilos yadayim or, ne- or my machreinim, you don't care if it has bugs or not. So you're not makbid. So it's not, a, it's not considered a tikkun. You could use a filter. But if you're putting on the filter to filter the water, even though you're taking the good from the bad, it's a kli boira. And therefore on Shabbos, many people will not use the filter. So for those that don't use the filter on Shabbos, what's the lacha regarding Yom Tif? So the chayra, what's the problem? The filter is not done the Yom and Rabbim. You, you take a little bit of water. But the problem is, the chayra, the fact is, you could do it mi ba'ayjayim. If you filter the water mi ba'ayjayim before Yom Tiv and you put it in a big jars, it doesn't lose quality taste. It doesn't lose any, it doesn't get affected by the taste. So the question is, since it's efsha mi ba'ayjayim, maybe you have to do all the filtering mi ba'ayjayim. Plus, you could also buy bottled water or seltzer. But the answer to both is that that's not considered efsha mi ba'ayjayim. You know, Yom Tiv usually two days more people, what are you going to buy? Big barrels? Where are you going to keep the barrels? You can't put in the refrigerator. So you can't have cold water. That's not considered Efshemi Boijoy. You know, Shabbos you could manage, you, put a, you fill up a pitcher or two. But Yom Tiv, it seems to be much more difficult. To have, to, the fact that you could buy bottled water, that doesn't mean it's Efsha to use regular water. You have know, to buy water. So therefore the Pais can say on Shabbos, we don't use the filter. Yom Tiv, the filter could be used. Now the boys in Yeshiva asked, but we live in a bungalow county and we don't drink the water the whole summer. So we survive on bottled water the whole summer. I said, fine, you know, that's, one of, that's, like, that's part of bungalow county life. People endure the most difficulties just to be in the mountains. But it doesn't mean that for a typical person that's considered Efsha because you could buy bottled water. It seems that the Velt is Mekel on Yom Tiv and Shabbos not. Rabbi Yashi was asked about the old meaning of having that Shmata on the sink on Pesach, that is, because you're worrying about Bachamitz. So he said, that's not a problem of Boira, even though it might be looked at as a Kli Boira because there's no Chamitz and there's no Boira. That's not a riot to our filter, because that, what he's saying is, you'll drink it the way it is. There's no Boira. But this filter, if it's working still, it is making Boira. So it is a Kli Boira. What's Taka the Heta? Lechayra, because it's EF Shemi Boijoim. Another Pesach issue that has to be mentioned is the cleaning of the romaine lettuce. So basically, there's a problem of boira, but there's another problem of killing the insects. If they're alive insects and you're washing it vigorously, you might be killing the insects. And Taka the Shmir Shabbos in Dalit Tess says that you've got to be careful cleaning I- insects if it kills them. It's awesome. Ah, you'll say it's shechita, that's mutter for oichel nefesh. So hopefully you're not eating the bugs and you're not shechting them. So that's not the issue. Question of mitoich, but doesn't seem to apply in this case. So therefore you have to follow the halacha and clean all insects before Yom Tiv or before Shabbos. This year grad it's Shabbos, but even on a Yom Tiv it's a problem because you don't want to clean them on Yom Tiv and kill the bugs. The truth is to merely soak the vegetables, romaine lettuce, in water is a different problem even on Yom Tov. And this is an exceptional case. The Mishnah in Be'ya, Daf Yudal Ramad Be'ez, Ramun Mil says, a Chiddush, Af Madiach V'Shoyla. You're allowed to take a, a bag of, let's say, beans, throw it into a big barrel of water, and hopefully the Psoilas, the bugs, rise to the top, and the beans fall to the bottom. 
Gamliel is meikel because Boyer on Yom Tov is mutter. But Zok the Rambam and many Rishonim, we don't pass like Rambam Gamliel. Madiach v'shoilet, putting things, soaking things in water, and the psoil is rising is awesome. The Magen Avraham and Tafku of Yod the Rav, the Chayodim and Pei Beis Dalit all say Madiach v'shoilet on Yom Tov is awesome. Question, I, Boyer on Yom Tov is mutter, and this is not flour. So the answer is Pashit, Zok the Rav, this is always done in a big volume. This Madir Hashel was done on a large scale. Ah, large scale is Yom Rabim. That was always a problem, even on Yom Tiv. Others, the Me'iri says, of the Dechayel, both are a Yom Tiv issue. So in other words, Madir Hashel is Baira, that's also even on Yom Tiv. So for someone that wants to clean his lettuce, he takes off the leaves, puts it in a, a, a mixture, kills the bugs. He's doing two isurim, killing the bugs and boira. That's why, again, please check the morer if you have to check it before Yom Tiv. Loimi boy this year, that's Yom Tiv Shechal B'Shabbos. It's also even on a regular Yom Tiv, the Madiach V'Shoil is boira, and also the issue of killing the bugs. So what do you do if you forgot to check the morer before Yom Tiv? So Rav Moshe has a big chiddush in, in Chelek Alef Kuf of Chay regarding regular Shabbos that you're not allowed to soak fruit in water, but you're allowed to rinse an apple under the tap water. I medir for shaylas also. So Rav Moshe says a chiddush, but he says it that the issa is soaking, rinsing, washing off is never also. Rav Moshe says no one ever thought of an issa of washing dishes. I it's boira. So it seems that Ramay says soaking is the problem, rinsing off is not Madiach Vishayla. So if someone forgot to rinse or what, forgot to soak the Mara before Yamtiv, you could break off the pieces, rinse it under a stream of water, and do it in a way that will not be a psikresha of killing if there is live insects. Someone people still bake rather even today, I'm not talking about up, but they bake on sukkas or shwas. If they want to, they have the minute, they, oh, they, they buy re, uh, pre-sifted flour and they sift it another time before they use it. You say, oh, Kedoshim, they're concerned, maybe there are bugs. So, sifting flour is the worst. That's our kadam. That's the Mechaba, Tafku Vav, Siv Beis. The Mishnabur and Siv Katan Yudalit says, even sifting a second time is awesome. But I saw the Ber Moshe in Ches Reish Dalit and the Orlitzi and Yud Tes Vav say, when we re-sift flour that is already pre-sifted, it's only because of a chashash, a hid, or maybe there's a bug or two. That's not miracate in the Mishkan, that were impurities. So re-sifting, pre-sifted flour would be mutter. Now they got to add that you should use a shinoi because you really should have done it before Yom Tiv. So that's somewhat of a chiddish, try to do it before Yom Tiv, but if you forgot, you do it with a shinoi, which means do it, sift it onto a table instead of on, onto a big tray. Question, you bought two pounds of shleiman, matzah, and you only found two and a half shleiman. <laughs> two and a half is like, that's part of the uh, chachma. Two and a half shleiman, or two shleiman. And you want to take out the shleiman from the shvarim. But not to use it now, to use it at a later time. Is there boira by shleimim from shvarim? This is Negea this year when we have a Shabbos. We have two Shabbos. So we know big and small, there's never boira. Because it's minechot. Big pieces and small pieces, minechot. So l'chayr, what's the shayla here? But here, Rabbi Shleim Zalman and Shmir Shabbos, in Gimel Ayin Tes, he says, Alechem Mishnah is a very precious commodity. A shleimim is a very precious commodity. That's not like big or small, that's like Isavaheta. So he classifies Shlemim and Shvarim not as big and small, but as two different items, a different usage. You could have a lot of Shvarim, but there's not Lechem Mishnah. So therefore, we should mention that taking out Shlemim from Shvarim should be Boira. The only thing is, if you take out the Shlemim to use right away, so that's Mutter. You're taking the good from the bad right away. But taking out the, the Shlemim for Shvarim for later use, that would be Boira. On Yom Tev is fine. On this year that it's Shabbos would be a problem. Again, we wonder, according to the Maril, that says that even taking matzah meal 
from matzah, from matzah to matzah meal is boira, would this be more of a problem? The answer is no, because this is not at all matzah meal, it's not flour at all, it's matzah. So it's a regular item that you're allowed to be boira on Yom Tiv, but not on Shabbos. Question, someone wants to, very a typical case, the child wants to go to shul Yom Tiv morning, and he needs socks for the morning. So mother says, I'll make you a pile at night, don't wake me up, let me sleep in the morning. So let's say there's a whole, bu- a whole mixture of socks, different colors, but it has to match the, 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 the outfit. So taking out the sock that you want the child to wear at night for the next day on Shabbos is awesome. I am taking the goods from the bed, I'm not using a keili, but this is boira. It's not uh, miyad, it's, it's, it's being done tonight for tomorrow. So on Shabbos, that's a problem. You take out the pile before the child wears it. Is there any difference on Yom Tif? This is Baira, but it's not Oichel Nefesh. So most Paiskim, I can't get into the details, say that Baira is only Mutta for Oichel Nefesh purposes. And we don't apply the general cloud of Mitoich regarding Baira. I saw that in a long list of Paiskim. Grada the Shevet Alevi and Yud Ayin Tes is Mekel. So, but it seems most pais can feel that Baira is only mutta for Eichel Nefesh, non Eichel Nefesh would be awesome. And Achrein Chav, let me leave you with a beautiful Shailah Lamaisa that has really more than one Shailah. Someone left a real Muktza, a Muktza Machmz Chasar and Kiss, on top of the box of wine. And now you need wine for the Yom Tev Suda. Is there any Eitzah? So, Lechaira. Yom Tiv, who doesn't know, Muktza applies. In fact, the Pais can say Yom Tiv is more of an Issa Muktza than Shabbos. However, there's a big problem. Because when you learn Boira on Yom Tiv, one of the big sugars we didn't touch upon because it's come out not Negeya, is when you have a Taru voice on Yom Tiv, Boira is Muktza. If it's a little bit Psylus and a lot of Oichel, don't be a Baklin. Take the Psylus out of the Oichel because it's less Tircha. Even though you're doing Baira, but Tirchan Yom Tiv is a no-no. Okay. The question is, you're taking the Psoilis from the Oichel, how are you allowed to move Muktza? Psoilis is Muktza. So Toysis in Shabbos, Kuf Membeis on Medeis has this question. And Toysis says, Amor de Gechidish, that the Psoilis, since it's so little, is bottled into the Oichel. Bottle? What's bottle? It's not a din in bittel, like, you know, bittel b'roiv, but it's considered like part of the food, and it's not considered moving muktzah because it's like oichel. And, and the chazenish, explaining toys, is a moridik, a moridik, a chiddish. A little bit soilus in oichel is like oichel. And therefore, if you have a fly in the soup, if there's no isaboira, you could actually pick up the fly and take it out. Of course, if there's no tzeda, a dead fly. Why? Because if it's a mixture, it's bottle, it becomes oichel. Azoi zok toistis. Rabbi Kiva Ega has a different chiddush. And Rabbi Kiva is on the Mishnayis, and our Mishnah, Deya Aleph Ches. Rabbi Kiva Ega seems to be bothered by an obvious question. How could it be on Yom Tov you're allowed to cook and bake uh, freely, and you can't move muktza for oichel nef? It doesn't make sense. Zotib Kiveiga, that's the Pshat in the Gemara. If it's an Oichel Nefer situation, you take out the Psoilis, are you moving Muktza? Moving Muktza is Muktza for Oichel Nefesh. I bey a Chanel de Biyam de Vlois Seyochel. So, Teret is Pashit. To eat Muktza, to have enough for Muktza, eat some Janashim and Adekel, you can't have enough. That's awesome. But to move Muktza for Eichel Nefesh, Zabtib Kiveige is Mutta, and it's really a Beferish of Tais Zabtib Kiveige. Because Tais says you're allowed to move Muktza for Eichel Nefesh. And this Tais is quoted in the Ramah, the end of Simon, Tav Kuftes. So according to Tais, we have a Mardik Chiddish. If you have a Muktza on top of a bottle of, on top of wine, on Shabbat you can't move it. It's not, there's no head of, 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 of Kishon Lach Lissa by Echsar and Kis. But on Yom Tov, you could actually move the Muktzu off the bottle of wine. And this gives us leeway to a very unavoidable question. Because every Yom Tov Shani, you want to prepare the Neiris for the Nashim, but you, you encounter Muktzu issues. There's burnt out wicks, or burnt out matches, or 
little bits of wax, how do you move that muktzah? So you really could pick up the neiris and shake it out, kalachayad. Zogd Rabbi Kiva Ega in the Shulchan Aruch in Tov Kuf Aleph, L'shitasi, it's beautiful. Since the Maisi are moving the, the Muktzah to prepare the Neiris, and Neiris is Oichel Nefesh, you're allowed to move the Yadai and the Muktzah is Oichel Nefesh. Frag the Bishlein Bezalman and Shmira Shabbos, what do you mean? Yud Gimel Pei Zayin, he asks this, today we have lights, we don't need the Neiris, it's not Oichel Nefesh. But Zok the Chut Hashanah, Yab Nisan Karelitz, so if you say that, how can you make a Brach on Neiris? Obviously, the ambiance, the, the neiros of Yom Tev adds to the Oichel Nefesh. If that's the case, you'll have to move Muktzah to Oichel Nefesh. I got to talk. If Rabbi Shon was supposed to be here, I guess I have to take him over. Rabbi Yisai, at one o'clock, me at the is the next year, but Rabbi Cheskel, Oye, Bar Kashas, Shires and Shufas, and all different Kashas issues and Pesach on the whole year. Come back, Rabbi Yisai, give me a minute. In two hours, one o'clock at the year, but Rabbi Cheskel, Oye, Bar Kashas, Shires and Shufas. Mariv Rabbi Yisai, two weeks before Pesach, we're holding here, we're soon going to be by the Sedim, me at the Shem, we'll say, Kol Dichfin Yesev Yechal. Why do we say that? In Tonu de Beriyohi it says that how would Eden Zoyche to go out of Mitzrayim because Gemilas Chasodim how beautiful is Klal Yisrael before Pesach every Eid cares about another Eid we try to help other Eid and I'm going to come into our Pesach we want to enjoy our family go out of all its sodas you didn't need Yeshua's little Shimuri we need protection there's no bigger protection than Kol Dichven Yesev Yechal there are hundreds of families who still do not have what to go with Pesach? Yes, they can't buy matzah, they don't have money, and we want to have a schus. There's no biggest schus to help out these mishpachas. We make our appeal for hundreds of families. We ask everybody to give at least a hundred dollars. If they give five hundred, a thousand, each mishpacha gets five hundred or a thousand dollars. Please write a check to Congregation Besan or to the credit card machine right here on the beam. But everybody, it's a choyv gomo, a mitzvah gedoyle, and klal yisrael, and etvon, and oistim. Everybody wants to be mishtatev in this greatest mitzvah in order we should have a schus, that we should have good kinder, we should come to the Yom Tov with a real true manche to seinu, nachas from the kinder, and have an upcoming year of geula and protection for us and all Kaiser. So please, Rabbi, so come over now to the Bima, give you a credit card or a check, or at least a hundred dollars, and that's because you all have a fairly Yom Tov and a good year.
Shabbos, books at night. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I thought you meant before. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. No, there's no day today that Ramadan is just as interested as ever. And soaking is also that help. Soaking is also that You have to rub it. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. Okay. You ready? Rabbi Sarah Smith is going to give the Sikkim of today's Shia Chas Yontif. It's for Miyad, Miyad. Thank you for Miyad. Just to let's review what we learned today, Bez Hashem. Boira, as we know, is not always Asa, is not always Muta. Some Malachis, Afi, and Bishalab, always Muta, Boira. According to the Magad Mishnah, that's the halacha, is generally muta unless a buyer that's done, liyam and rabim, unless a buyer that was really before Lisha. A, a large scale sifting with a nafa and a kvara is a problem. Flour, bechlal, we don't sift because flour is before Lisha, but, or even wheat, matzah, clumps of matzah in matzah were also chaish that it has the halacha of wheat. But basically, that's the exceptional case, that anything that's before Lisha on Yom Tev, even Bayer is awesome. But Bayer on the kitchen, in the basic cases that we have, Bayer would not be a problem, unless you use a nap on Kvar, which is rear. Now let's apply this Lamaisa. Making a tea is mut on Yom Tev, taking out the tea bag, using a chainik that restrains the tea bag, even though that's a Kli Bayer, is mut because it's not a nap on a Kvar. It's mutter to use a peeler, a slotted spoon, an apple core, all those are mutter on Yom Tiv, not on Shabbos. A nutcracker, as we said, is not a kli boyer, it's a kli of taruvais. It's making a taruvais, so therefore on, even on Shabbos you could use it. Making cheese and butter is an example of Yom Im Rab, even on Yom Tiv is also. Boira, to separate a taruvais of slices of cake or slices of cold cuts, Boira to put away, if it's not a Yechol Nefesh, that would be Asa, if it qualifies to be a Taruvais. Boira is Muta on Yom Tiv, even if it's not Miyad, it's not being used right away, even at night for the day, or day for the afternoon, as long as it's in, within the Halachic day. Preparing Boira, setting the table or making a Boira on day for the night Suda, the coming night, that's, that's, that's an Issa Vachana. The only time you're allowed to make boyer one day to the next is Erev Shabbos, going into Shabbos, because we made an Erev Tavshilin. If something is Efshem, Erev Yom Tev, you should do it. Generally, 
Baking and cooking is not Efshami, but Mi Erev Yamtiv, but making Boira, if there's a mixture, you should do the Boira before Yamtiv. Taking out the bones from the fish or the seeds from the watermelon is not Efshami Boira, so it's Mutter. Straining Lakshin is Mutter with the strainer because it's not a Gnaf and Kvara. Fly out of a soup, the Taz, Mr. Burr says to take out with a little bit of soup, but Halacha, you probably can be makel just taking out the fly because it's a Boira on Yamtiv that's not related to flour or those type of items. Filtering water on Shabbos, many people are machmir, but on Yom Tev it's mutter because it's not efsha mi bo'ijayim. Cleaning mara, you should clean it before Yom Tev. There are two problems, killing the insects and soaking the lettuce in water itself is a ma'isa bo'ir. Someone pointed out correctly that, I said if you forgot to do it before Yom Tev, do it on Yom Tev. By soaking it, rinsing it, but he said it will, if, if you're talking about romaine lettuce that was not grown in a greenhouse, you're talking about a concern of aphids being present, they do not come off just rinsing it under a stream of water. They have to be rubbed vigorously, and that would be a psigratia of killing the insects. What I really meant was when you buy the pre-checked and you check it anyhow, the pre-checked I mean those that will grow in greenhouses, so then it's only a question of bugs that came after the the, in, the, in the packaging or the like, so then rinsing would probably get off those bugs that came later. If you forgot to rinse the murder, be careful, do it in a way that it's not Chilol Shabbos or Chilol Yamtiv. Resifting flour that's just a hider after it was pre-sifted is muta, do it with a shinoi. Taking shleimim from shvarim is a problem of boira, it's muta, lo'isi suda. I failed to mention that you're allowed to, make, you're allowed to take shleimim for the seder, but not for the shulchan aruch. That's considered like a different suda. It's like two different sudas. The, the seder is a few hours, then you have the shulchan aruch, so that's considered like two different sudas. Boira and non-food, we should treat like Shabbos, only mutter to use right away. Some amekel, do we say mitoich? Muktza for eichel nefesh is mutter. You're allowed to move muktza for eichel nefesh. You're allowed to clean the neiros out of the muktzah, I, I should have mentioned clearer, I was talking about preparing on Yom Tev Sheini for Yom Tev Sheini. You can't prepare on the first day for the second day, but when you're preparing on Yom Tev Sheini, the nearest for Yom Tev Sheini, you're allowed to move the muktzah, and there's no concern of muktzah because it's Yom Tev. Okay. Last year, he said two different things. Yeah, yeah, he said two different things.